Are, are you okay? Are you meowing? Is that a meow? Oh. <laughs> Al's doing that weird thing in the background that they do again all the time. Oh. <laughs> I wish they wouldn't do that the entire time that we record. It freaks oh. me out. Oh, it's fine. We'll oh. make it, we'll make it work. <laughs> well, anyways. Uh yeah. So uh luckily there are other few other people who have left the dining hall to chatter privately or stroll around, so I don't look too out of place. Never again. God. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty miserable. Uh. I have no idea how I got caught up in that situation. Maybe it's your mouth? Uh, but it's certainly one I don't want repeated. I mean, we did specifically choose to sit down next to Linnaeus. Right? Those two are bad enough by themselves, yet somehow get exponentially worse together. Ugh. And yet they're both romanceable? Maybe. I don't know. Finding my way to one of the back doors, I step out into the gardens and take a deep breath of the night air. This is actually rather nice. Hmm. The sounds of laughter and the clinking of silverware become distant, barely audible through the castle walls. There's an ornate stone bench nested, nested among the hedges and fragrant brushes, bushes. There, there's <laughs> there's something over there in the bushes. We don't know what it we is. We don't know what yet. But we're going to lower ourselves onto it. With a soft sigh. <sighs> I've sat on a stone bench. I don't, I don't think they're that comfortable. I don't mean... Well, Personally, well, R Rivian or Vivian or Rivian <laughs> suffers from a lot of back pain, so it's nice to have okay. like really firm surfaces. My dining chair, however plush, turned out to be to provide a miserable experience, nesting me between an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Which was which? Uh, I don't know. I clasp my hands behind my head and gaze up at the sky, where the almost full moon floats in a sea of stars. Oh, it looks so serene and peaceful. Two words that don't seem to have any place at this bustling celebration. I kind of like the scene change. All the grandiose parties I've been to with my family in the past weren't nearly as magnificent in scale. That's right, my family. <gasps> We're gonna reminisce. <gasps> A smile gradually forms on my lips as I fondly wonder what they're doing right now. Father, mother, my little sister, who's a few years older than Hazel is. Oh, how young are we? If I have a family of my own someday, will they all get embroiled in these endless politics and quarrels? Sounds like that's the family business as a noble, oh, right? Oh, like, absolutely. I think I'd rather have a quiet life in the countryside than be forced to keep dabbling in court affairs. And I'd never want my family to be in a situation like this. Rivian, you wouldn't last two seconds on the countryside. Right? Like, what would you do for work? And right. Days of just lazing around and reading them? Real um, life I sounds like hard work. <laughs> Thank you, Rivian, for immediately <laughs> uh, taking on that criticism of ours there. Uh, I pluck a rose from one of the bushes nearby, admiring the soft petals as I cup it in my hands, minding the thorns, of course. Ouch, a thorn! Arden, Linnaeus, Franz. They all seem so at home here, like they were born to be around bustling crowds and courtly intrigue. Wait, Arden doesn't seem like that at all. Yeah, right. Could I ever be someone like that? Do I want to be? Oh. A part of me is perfectly happy with how I am now, but another smaller part of me wants more. To dance, to charm others, to read politics as well as I used to read my favorite picture books as a little boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you read picture books? I, I don't know. But Do we are are there picture books? Are there are there a lot of picture books in this time period? I, I'm guessing that someone has to sit there and draw each page out. Because so, holy shit. Right? <laughs> but I really wonder if it's worth it, or if it'll ever happen. They say you can change yourself into what you really want to be if you try hard enough, but it seems like some parts of myself are just immutable, a core part of who I am. Who I am. Wow. Well, an avid reader, a purveyor of delicious sweets, the son of the best military strategist in our kingdom's history... Mm. And incidentally, still very much a, vir a Virgo. Virgo. Oh God, I hate Virgos. <laughs> oh God, they're the worst. They're even oh. worse than Gemini's. Not all Virgos are bad. No, no, no. Controversial statement: Every single Virgo is oh, bad. Oh, disagree. No. Oh, oh no. I know. No, no, I know nothing about astrology. I just take. I just <laughs> enjoy taking really harsh stances. Oh, okay. Stuff that I don't know. Well, about. we're gonna get jumped because we're out in the garden all alone. Because come on, Rivian. <laughs> Your sense of self-preservation is shit. Yeah, he has like no military tactical training like at all. At all. Nearby, a faint rustling sound startles me from my thoughts. 
If I strain my ears, I can barely hear the sound of whispering. Just like yesterday during the dance. Okay. Sure. Gritting my teeth in determination to find this mystery whisperer, I creep closer in its direction as quietly as I can. Back inside. <laughs> Let them hear. Oh, what? A few phrases are discernible, but I can't really figure out what they're saying. Sounds like a middle-aged peasant. The whispering fills you with determination. <laughs> right? <laughs> but for some reason, ominous words echo in the back of my mind. Mark, Mark my, my words, words, little Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> Something unpleasant is going to happen, little kitten. Oh, <laughs> You'll be dragged into it whether you like it or not. And the chest of blades. A shiver runs down my spine in a cold tingle. What if this is what Franz was talking about? What if I... Uh, <gasps> Arden? Uh, is it Arden? <laughs> a sudden tap comes at my shoulder and I whirl around fast enough to almost lose my balance. Yeah! Arden! Oh, damn, Riv. Rather than the assassin, the man who stands before me is... Arden. Thank you. What the hell are you <laughs> doing here? Protecting Nurse, your ass. Don't answer that. Looking for you. I hold my finger to my lips and glare at Arden while straining my ears. Oh my god, Rivian, you're so bad at this. The sound of whispering, however, is completely gone. So bad at this. Figures. Riv? What is it? Why are you acting so strange? (sighs) Nothing. Tell him! Seriously, Rivian, god! I wave my hand dismissively, shaking my head. Maybe it's a good thing he came. After all, if those people were really up to something... Is the dinner finished? Ugh. There'll be a break before the dance, I assume. Probably. I doubt I can dance with all that fricassee in me. Is that how you say that? I think my huh. cheeks are swollen from being... I don't even know so what it much. is. Ah, I, I oh, also don't know. Oh, by your swarm of aunts? I almost felt sorry for you. His cheeks do look a little pink. Arden nods a little sourly when I mention his fanatic female relatives, rubbing at the back of his neck with a hand. Wait, can you actually pinch someone's cheeks so much that they become pink? Yeah, it's like really easy. Huh, okay, fair enough. Also, (laughs) this music is baller. I like it a lot. The music in the game all together is very good. It is very good. I saw you with a couple of other gentlemen, though. (gasps) Arden, you're the sweetest, (laughs) nicest out of everyone, and I want you to be my love interest. (laughs) Arden, who was never good at hiding his curiosity, tilts his head in a manner obviously implying his interest. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Yes, we should eat together! It was awful. I never thought I'd say this, but I would have much rather eaten with you. Bromancing? Yes. Yes, yes Mal, we're, we're romancing people a lot. Bromancing, well, bromancing. Well, I, well, see, here's the thing. I think it was bromancing with those other two, despite our not wanting to bromance yeah, with either okay. of them. And we're trying to romance with Riv- or with Arden. With ourself, Rivian. <laughs> oh, really? With a delighted grin quickly spreading on his face, Arden lets out a little chuckle. I may be imagining things, but I'm pretty sure his pink cheeks just got a shade darker. Oh. Well, I would have rather eaten with you too, Riv. Of course. I mean, who'd want to eat with those ladies anyway? Not that they're not nice ladies. It's just... They're all my aunts, and they ask a <laughs> yes, lot of yes, strange I questions. It's kind of embarrassing, Maybe really. Maybe next time, then. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> we give him the slightest nice comment, oh, and he's, he's just so... fucking freaking out over there because right? we're such a dick all the time. Yeah. I can, I can practically envision him as a huge dog, tail badly wagging, tongue, tongue hanging out happily. Oh my god, Rivian, you prick. Uh, it'd be more flattering if it were anyone else. Because it's Arden, though, I don't exactly get an ego boost. Rivian, you fucking prick. He's such a jerk. God. He doesn't deserve Arden. I agree. We might have to romance someone else just because he doesn't deserve Arden. Mm. Jesus Christ on my buddies. <sighs> Taking a deep breath and soothing my hair back with one hand, I start heading back towards the castle, motioning for Arden to follow. Oh. He quickly catches up to my side, distractingly gazing up at the stars. Why were you out here anyway? Just for a walk? Yes, I was in dire need of some fresh air. Otherwise, I probably would have passed out like a maiden with their corset stretched too tight. How do girls God, even Jesus. wear those things? I'd explode after a minute. Wow, that's also bad. The image of Arden in a corset comes to my mind, and I find myself highly disturbed. Oh, Rivian, you prick. Oh, what a jerk. 
You don't deserve Arden. Well, Doesn't. Anyway, what are you going to do until the dance starts? I question him as we step back inside the main hall, pausing as we pass the threshold. Oh? Well, after you left the dining hall, we were told there was going to be some kind of announcement. Some... Stick around to hear that. And afterwards, there might be time before the dance for me to go for a little jog. Oh! Jogging before dancing? You are a <laughs> freak of nature. I like to stay in shape. I just hate feeling all full after a meal, you know. Need to work it off. Yes, wow. yes, whatever you say. <laughs> Says the person who ate cake for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, this is true. As we head further into the main hall, I can see a number of guests have already left the dining room and returned here. You know, this art is is actually rather pretty. Yeah. Like, this is, you know, I'm not going to lie. It took me just a minute or a hot minute to warm up to the art style, but I'm actually really starting to like it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's very detailed. As we, uh, yeah, if Arden's right, whatever announcement they have for us will probably be given in this hall. And will dramatically shift the next ch uh, chapter of the game. My eyes are suddenly drawn to a small figure standing amidst the crowd, talking with someone whose back is turned to me. All right, it's Celeste the boy, I guess. That's the boy who knocked on my door earlier, isn't it? I wonder if he's ever met with Cel up with Celeste. I saw her just before dinner, so perhaps the two of them had already spoken. Strange that he was so jumpy about it, though. Foreshadow. Hmm. Heaving a sigh, I eye some of the guests for a few moments before glancing over to Arden, elbowing his side a little bit. Well, it looks like most of our fellow fine-blooded company has finished dining. This is a very casual affair, isn't it? Arden nods at agreement, rubbing a hand thoughtfully on his cheek. I think most fancy galas tend to keep guests on a stricter watch or schedule, but the king seems more interested in a relaxed atmosphere. Something to really root out a bunch of traitors, you know? <laughs> we're part of some grand social experiment. <gasps> like, you know, how long oh. it takes noblemen to start throwing food fights or having sex in the closets? Uh, the first one uh, takes a while, the second closets. one not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Arden's shocked expression at my casual remark is... I don't actually know if I've ever heard that word. I also Imitab don't... Imitab Imitably priceless, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. I've also never heard that. Really? Hasn't he heard worse than the guard forces? It's a bunch of rowdy young men, for crying out loud. Oh, but we said closet. Anyway, look, it's that fellow who read the schedule of festivities last night up on the balcony. Is he going to give his announcement up there? Look, Wouldn't the that... balcony be a natural place to, like... It, it would be. <laughs> look at that fellow, the door, who read the announcements. <laughs> I squint up at the man's shape, as well as the scroll in his hands. There's just no one. <laughs> the elegantly dressed crowd goes gradually quiet as all of our eyes focus on the top of the second floor balcony. There's a bit of antsy shuffling, as a few folks probably drank too much wine in our desperate need to visit the nearest chamber pot. Oh, God. Mm. <gasps> just, some cheap, just peeing into pots. Yeah, that's how you do. Clearing his throat, the announcer inhales deeply and begins to read. Ladies! and gentlemen, refined guest, we hope you have enjoyed His Highness's grand celebration so far. Now for the twist! Tomorrow oh, right. the festival will continue with new games and attractions, and it is His Majesty's sincere wish for you to delight in them all. Now, it is my great pleasure to... Oh, I was wondering if it was going to be like a... Guest of um, honor who... Like a lottery to see who has to go fight it out in the oh, cage match. That would be amazing. <laughs> like, uh oh. Halfway through his sentence, the man reading the announcement suddenly cuts off. Uh huh. All right. A servant who has just hurried up to his side whispers something in his ear, and I can tell from the announcer's widened eyes that something's happened. The chest of blades. Is the king it's dead? Is this something set up as part of the event? Who's the guest? Who's the guest? I wanted to know so badly. Oh, no, but the chest of blades, it waits for no one. Murmuring breaks out through the crowd, impatient and curious whispers flitting about. Well, now I'm curious too, damn it. It must be something rather serious for him to just go silent like that. Oh, I mean, I maybe Arden. we'll... What do you think is... Maybe huh? we'll never find out. When I glance over to where Arden was, I find a significant lack of Arden standing there now. No, our date... <laughs> Arden, you're the best part of this game so far. <laughs> he was never one exact, exactly one to be stealthy, but he did have to answer nature's call outside or something. He had plenty of time to do that earlier. He had plenty of time to piss off in a bush earlier. 
Ahem. It is my regret to announce that uh, due, due to, to unforeseen, unforeseen death, <laughs> our guest will not be presented tonight. When you play the chess of blades, you live or die. Mm -hmm. The uneasy voice of the announcer slices through the whispers pervading the room. Uh, a small issue has arisen that His Majesty's men are currently attending to. Oh. He asks that all guests remain You know it's bad when people start telling you to remain calm. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's like the During shit hit the fan. Trial, please continue to enjoy the remaining festivities. And report any and suspicious report behavior. Any suspicious behavior to the guards. Sure. Finishing his announcement, he bows respectfully and disappears further beyond the balcony. What's gonna happen with the plot? I'm so curious about where this is going. Right? Leaving behind a haze of confusion and curiosity. Well, I suppose we'll just retire for the night. No, there's blood I sport down in the basement. The <laughs> I wanted to try dancing in my new shoes. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. The idle chatter resumes its normal level among the guests, although a faint sense of uncertainty seems to hang over everything like a storm cloud. Uh-huh. What on earth was that all about, I wonder? Uh-oh. Baffled, I shake my head and start to turn around to look for Arden. Excuse me, sir. Uh-oh, it's Excuse the voice. Excuse me, governor. <gasps> oh, shit, son. This, I saw this guy in the cutscenes. A, a heavy hand suddenly firmly clamps down on my shoulder. God. It belongs to the armored guard in front of me, standing to block my path. I'm afraid you'll need to come with me, sir. No. I beg your pardon, what's the meaning of this? Adjusting his posture, posture rather stiffly, the guard motions silently for me to walk toward the stairs. Mm. Is it just my imagination, or is he treating me like I've done something wrong? <gasps> we killed Arden. Oh no. We mistreated Arden. To the point where Arden died. That's no. bad. No. I have quite a bad feeling about this. Oh, Arden, you were the best of us. Deciding it's in my best interest to cooperate rather than cause a fuss, I head up the staircase, trying to ignore the questioning gazes sent my way by some of the other guests. Doing my my best to not have any sense of self-preservation, I follow this heavily armored man <laughs> with a large sword up the staircase to a place alone with just the two of us. <laughs> In a dark corner, some closet. Absolutely. Where oh. I guess we're making out? Uh, I don't know. With all that armor, it might be hard. It might be hard, yeah. I have to take off the helmet. The visor, yeah. Or at least, the, it didn't even look like there was a visor. Oh, that's true. Hopefully a vicious rumor decrying me as some sort of debased criminal doesn't start spreading during my absence. Damn nobles are like vultures around a carcass when it comes to calling each other out. <laughs> Arden, I don't think you have a lot of room to... Yeah. yeah. Not Arden. Or Rivian. Rivian. When we reach the guest hall corridor, the guard, who is following closely behind me, quickly curls his gauntleted fingers around my arm. Oh my god, Careful Rivian. Careful now, no need to leave bruises. When are you going to tell me why exactly I'm being taken to the naughty corner? He's going to kill you, Rivian. There has been an incident, sir, and you are under suspicion for involvement. <gasps> mm -hmm. Incident? Mm -hmm. You mean what the announcement was about just now? Well, clearly I had an established alibi during. Sir, you let one of the servant girls wander the hallways. <laughs> Alone. How dare, sir. Ignoring my objections, the guard pulls me forward down the hallway, this time far less gently than before. My father will hear about this! <laughs> now I definitely have a bad feeling about this. Rivian, you're so bad at being a noble. You're bad <laughs> in every way. How on earth did I even get involved in the first place? I was just minding my own damn business. Ugh. <sighs> The room we arrive at is a few halls down from mine. One hand firmly grasping my arm, the guard wraps his knuckles on the door, eyeing me not too subtly from the side all the while. Is the guard romanceable? <laughs> Sir, I brought one of the suspects. Sir. Okay, hold on. No, I want to go back a sec. How are we able to see that he's eyeing us, like, with suspicion? Well, that's like the Battlestar Galactica, like visor so you could look out the side right like no but there's a void in there there's nothing this man doesn't even have it's just eyes. a suit it's just a suit it's like some full metal alchemist crap going on it here it absolutely is god rivian is so perceptive it is wild it's so per for someone so perspective perceptive he's so bad at taking care of himself <laughs> one of the suspects bloody disgrace god as i gripe quietly to myself trying to swallow my budding panic the door suddenly opens it's oh about time Varison! 
The astonished, bespeckled face of the Inquisitor appears before me. Oh no, we shouldn't have eaten all that cake. <laughs> oh. I just saw him at the dinner table. He must have called, been called out as soon as I left. Linnaeus? You're the one I'm being taken to? Makes oh, sense, he's the Inquisitor. You can right. distract me from this mess, right? Uh-oh. <sighs> you shouldn't have eaten that cake earlier, Rivian. Linnaeus's hesitant silence dashes my budding hope of a quick end to whatever I've been caught up in. The chest of blades! <laughs> His eyes narrow somewhat sharply at me, growing slightly chilly, although a dubious expression remains on his face. Well, if you've been implicated as a suspect, it's my duty to detain you, regardless of our acquaintanceship. Acquaintanceship. Bring him inside. That's quite the word. It is. Come on, Linnaeus! I grind my teeth together at his dismissive response, which the guard obeys, pushing me into the half-office, half-bedroom that is presumably Linnaeus's quarters. Wow, look, There's that's... stairs that go up over there to, like, a reading alcove? Oh. That's actually really cool. I would totally stay there. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Sitting in a chair in the, small, in the corner is a small young man huddled with his knees pulled up against his chest. Wait a second. Haven't I seen him before? Crying in front of my door? <sighs> In line at Hot Topic? Uh, <laughs> all right, it's the kid who knocked on my door earlier. What is he doing here, though? The, the, that's him, I, I think. S sorry, sir. He gives me a guilty look, quickly glancing away and hugging himself protectively. I see. What did you implicate us in? Well, Rivian, it seems Alistair here is quite convinced you were out in the gardens when tonight's incident took place. So... Wait a damn moment. What is this incident you all keep talking about? Give a man some details before you start accusing him of things he didn't do. For once, I agree with you, Rivian. Yes. I'll be asking the questions here. Yep. Linnaeus pauses, giving me a long, scrutinizing look before continuing. Tonight, a man was murdered on the castle grounds. <gasps> the chest Murder? <laughs> <laughs> a cold sensation tingles down my spine. So something really did happen after all. There was like zero chance of someone not being murdered. Right? Like, uh, His yeah. body was found in the garden. More than one. Dinner. Oh, absolutely. As a result, everyone who was in the surrounding area at that time is potentially involved in the affair. He pushes up his glasses in a matter-of-fact manner, manner to punctuate his words, then glances toward the boy in the chair. This young man here was within sight of the garden exit in the main hall during that period and informed us of the uh, individual... But what if the killer didn't go back into the main hall? And you happen to be... Uh, hmm. Well, I think passing through the doorframe on the way to the garden, right? Mm, okay. That's ridiculous! Besides, Arden was with me in the garden. Actually, Arden showed up later in the garden. stabbing my dinner Just fork saying. into anyone out there. That's true. I'm afraid Arden has been called to active duty for protecting the king at this time, so reaching him will be quite difficult. You'll have to be taken to a guarded area for further questions. Why bring me here to not ask me questions and then take me to another area? Is this going to be some hor horrible, like, torture fuck thing this if is, we have this, the 18 plus thing? Maybe this is because we kind of told Linnaeus off a little bit. Now he's just kind of getting back at us. I think it's because we went with the sweet cakes instead mm. of the balanced meal. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. I growl under my breath in frustration, squirming in the guard's firm grip on my arm. There has to be something I can do to get out of the situation. Call my... <laughs> yeah, I mean, right... Do you know who I am? Ugh. A guarded area is probably the safest to be with a murderer on the loose, but I refuse to be locked up for something I'm not guilty no, of. No, no, this is actually a really good idea. Right? Go be guarded. The f for the first time, go be guarded. Just as the armored man starts to pull me towards the door, a knock suddenly echoes from it. Oh, what? <laughs> what? The guard abruptly jerks in surprise, shooting a quick glance toward Linnaeus through his helmet. What? <laughs> well, <laughs> don't just stare, fool. The door isn't about to open itself. Is this really some rank-and-file guard? Because holy shit, that's intricate-ass armor that's with a lot purple of all over the place. Yes. I don't know. He reaches out with his gauntleted hand to hesitantly turn the knob. That sounds difficult. How is he hesitantly turning the knob? Whatever. I have to say, he's awfully tentative for someone wearing so much armor. Oh my god. 
I can't see who's standing at the door since the bulky guard is blocking my view, but he doesn't appear to have been stabbed, so I'm assuming it's not the murderer. Well... Sorry to interrupt, but do you mind if I barge in on this chat for a moment? Oh my I god, I do actually. This nasty situation. Who's this? It's Franz. The guard hesitates for a moment, then nods, and the visitor sidles past him. Franz? <gasps> why are you here? Why, why did the guard let him in? <laughs> right. Chuckling a little at our startled faces, the tall man dips slightly forward in a mocking bow toward us. Then he tells me about how sweet my curled lips are. <laughs> my, don't you two know how to make a man feel welcome? Uh, it's a bit cramped in here, isn't it? Oh, you just came in the door and, uh, whatever. <laughs> His eyes roaming across the room, Franz study, pauses to study Alcer for a moment, who nervously shifts a little under his intense gaze. I don't oh, recall wow. asking you for an interior space evaluation. What is your purpose in contaminating Ooh, my chambers? Contaminate? Jesus Christ, God. While the two of them offer each other challenging glares, I glance out of the corner of my eye at the door. It's open, and the guard seems distracted by Franz as a potential threat. Are we gonna fucking bolt, bolt for it? <laughs> I could try to make a run for it, although I doubt I'd get very far. What a rude way of phrasing things. But to answer your oh question, my God. I'm here to get my kitten off the hook. Mm. Did he just fall down? Suddenly reaching out towards me, Franz, Franz curls an arm around my waist and pulls me nonchalantly up against his side. Oh my god, is this because we had the sweets? And hand me, you blasted! Wait, did you say you were getting me oh, off the hook? Uh... Before I ask how exactly you intend to do that, I'm curious as to how you were even aware the guards of weren't exactly being in the quiet first about what they were doing. I mean, yeah, like it's like he could have just watched us get marched up by the heavily armored man <laughs> by Come ourselves. With me, sir. It was so okay. <laughs> when Acer is this an eyebrow suspiciously, staring at Franz with unmasked distaste. Well, I saw the little blonde here. Yes, exactly. The, in the main hall. So I followed them. It was clear enough he had gotten himself into some kind of trouble. Ugh. As he speaks, Franz squeezes my hip, as casually as someone embracing a longtime lover. Oh. I'm starting to think I'd almost be rather be taken to a cell than put up with this harassment. Same. I see. Yeah. In that case, are you able to confirm his whereabouts from the period between the end of the banquet and the announcement in the main hall? Franz nods confidently, lips curled in a winning smirk. Oh my god. Of course. His lip movements. You were there too, Glasses. Oh my god. You saw me follow him after he left the table. I was keeping an eye on him when he went to the gardens. You followed me? What is wrong with you, you thick-headed perv- Oh. That may be so, but I have no uh, evidence- I assumed this would happen. <laughs> Your presence in the gardens at that time also implicates you in this matter. Oh man, it's because he's a foreigner, probably. Interrupting my complaints sharply, Linnaeus drums his fingers on his forearm, returning Franz's smile with a derisive curl of his lip. Franz, however, doesn't seem to be phased by Linnaeus's retort. In fact, if anything, his tone only grows more confident and firm. Alright, what's your ace in the hole, Franz? It just so happens that a guard was with me at the time. I specifically requested his presence in case someone tried to jump the kitten outside. But it seems someone else got jumped instead. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice mm. one, Franz! They were murdered. Nice. But my point is, unless you're going to start accusing your own guards of murder conspiracies, you can confirm my statement with him. The boy's innocent. Oh. Mm. Oh, the room, the, the, the light <laughs> in the Dimmed. room just dimmed? Yeah. His unhurried words come to a finish, and Franz turns his head a little to glance down at me, squeezing a little lower down my hip. Oh my god. This time, though, I feel too shocked to even protest. Was Franz actually watching me that whole time? Yes! It was he obvious! Said, he said he was. D did he really know something was going to happen? He doesn't seem to be lying, and isn't flinching the slightest, even beneath Linnaeus's icy skeptical gaze. I can't believe it. He must have been telling the truth when we met out at the balcony last night. Some serious things are in motion now, and I've been caught up in them. In the chest, the of, chest blades. of blades! <laughs> but how did he know? Uh, very well, then. 
For a moment, Linnaeus, is, Linnaeus gives me a long look. One that seems less accusing and more like... Exciting or interesting. Some oh. kind of warning. Huh. Is yeah. he trying to tell me something? He's trying to tell me that Franz no. is a creep. If you could refrain, Not for the reason that Linnaeus thinks he's a creep. Time, oh, now we're wasting creep. his time. Please leave my chambers uh, so that I can okay, retain dude. my investigation. Oh my god. He this turns his back on us to face Alistair once more, to which the boy stares at him wide-eyed. Come on, kitten. Let's give Glasses and his poor victim over there some privacy. Jeez. Grabbing my hand, Franz pulls me past the somewhat dumbfounded guard and out into the hall, closing the door behind us. What in the... Shh. Not yet. Okay. I guess we gotta do the chess of blade somewhere else. With a surprisingly serious frown, Franz leads me down the hall in the direction of our adjacent rooms. A feeling of relief washes over me at be being taken out of that situation, although there's so many new questions piling up on my plate that I don't know where to start. But, you know, I think you should start watching the next episode of Chess of Blades. So yeah. thanks for watching, everybody. Yep. Please subscribe. subscribe if you like our videos. Hit 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 the subscribe like videos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, we have a Patreon. So uh, if you check out the end card of this video or the description, you can go see that. So see you later. Bye. Bye.